Welcome back to another Poster Pack Rat, hosted by yours truly. If you like video game art or have a little extra wall space in your home that's waiting to be filled, then keep watching. Every week I'll be posting new videos and showcasing a poster from my collection. I've been a poster collector for about three and a half years and I've developed a preference for what I believe makes for great poster design. Sit back and enjoy as I share my appreciation for posters, video game promos, and what I consider effective video game marketing. These are posters for games that I adore and if you like video games as much as I do, I suggest you find retail posters for those games, get them framed or restored first and then framed, and then hang them on your walls. Display them proudly and give them the recognition they deserve. Most of my posters I collect are retail posters, and retail posters were originally hung in brick and mortar stores like Babbage's, Electronics Boutique, and also at the arcades for arcade posters. They were used to entice shoppers to buy product with little to no information and quickly. You're really meant to enjoy looking at a retail poster, and a successful poster presents both a story and a value proposition. 
for a certain amount of money, you can buy a ticket and go to that destination in the poster, be that character, and do those exciting things. Oh boy, Star Wars and Mandalorian fans. This week, we have the poster for the game that included the first sighting of the Dark Trooper. Were you as excited as I was in the season finale of Mandalorian. Sorry to spoil it now if you haven't seen it, but I was more excited to see the appearance of the Dark Troopers than to see Luke. The Dark Trooper is the Terminator of the Star Wars universe. This week's retail poster is for Star Wars Dark Forces, released for the PC and Mac developed and published by LucasArts in 1995. It's an American poster, and like most American posters, it doesn't adhere to a standardized size like the Japanese and European markets. This poster is a large poster between the sizes of an A1 and B1. It's an odd size that requires an American movie poster sleeve or movie poster storage box. The paper sheen has a slight gloss on both the back and the front, and that really makes the inks pop like an image seen on a Trinitron television. And I consider the paperweight to be light to medium. For those who don't know, Dark Forces was a lot more than a Doom clone. It had a rich story that expanded on the Star Wars universe, exceptional pixel art and its cinemas, that were interwoven between stages, authentic sounding Star Wars sound effects and music, and to top it all off, great level design and gameplay. The game was a perfect representation of the Star Wars universe in a video game form. I can imagine George Lucas seeing this game for the first time and being floored, slack-jawed, and thinking games will eventually become more popular than films. Forget Ebert. So the game is wonderful, but let's talk poster. And let's start from a distance. To my eyes, there's a small design or layout flaw here. I have to point it out. Uh, Star Wars as a brand is available in many forms, from books to audio dramas to comics and films and now TV shows. The Star Wars story is told across so many different devices, and here I have trouble with this poster, pinpointing exactly where to find or how to engage with this new story. From a distance, I don't see any visual indicator for this being a video game other than the LucasArts logo. And while that means a lot to us who are in the know, let's pretend for just a moment that we don't know who or what LucasArts is. So how could this oversight have been remedied? Let's try a couple thought experiments to see what we like best. This will be like trying on shoes to find the most comfortable pair. In this poster, the designers could have added the words, the video game, beneath the Dark Forces title logo. Or instead of reading by Darren Stinnett, they could have replaced that with game directed by Darren Stinnett. As is, I'm a little confused into thinking this might be a book authored by Darren, and he might be at our local Barnes & Noble autographing new copies. Another way they could have improved this is by including a couple platform badges for MS-DOS and Mac. These thought experiments help us identify weaknesses in this particular poster and strengths in others. These strengths and weaknesses affect long-term value. I haven't forgotten this poster was designed and printed in 1995 and that it's crucial to judge it against its peers, but there's always exceptions that pull design forward. And when we come across these exceptions, we see why they command a higher resale value. So that said, after we've talked to the sales rep at Electronics Boutique and have worked out this is a new PC game, Let's take another look at this poster. First, my eye is almost dead center, and I see light emanating from the Stormtrooper's blaster, indicating he just took a shot at us. And I know he barely missed because we're still breathing. Next, my eye jumps up top, and I see the Dark Forces logo, bold and ominous. This title could mean a lot. This could be about the darkest days of the rebellion, or something having to do with the dark side of the force. We want to know more. Star Wars being in the logo confirms with the imagery 
this is a new Star Wars property. Then we fire our shot with our blaster and take down the stormtrooper on the right. That explosion just rips him apart. One more shot to get the guy who almost hit us and then his friend on the left. After we end these three, we continue down the corridor, making our way to the hangar in our ship, or on a diversion first to the data pod room where we retrieve the plans for blowing up the Death Star. The possibilities are endless. The action in this poster is so good. The lighting and early CG work are simple and effective. It makes me appreciate the early CG art from SGI. It transports me back to 1995. We are sitting in our old computers. Mine is a 486DX, hands at the keyboard, and staring into the glow of our CRTs. It's the weekend, and we're staying up late tonight playing some Dark Forces, eating chips, and drinking sodas. Along the bottom of the poster, we're given the rare treat of seeing the poster's accreditation. Artwork by Ron Lussier, designed by John Knowles and Terry Suhu. My apologies on any mispronunciation. You guys did outstanding work, and this poster is a lifelong treasure. I can only imagine how hard this was to create with the tools you had in 1995. And if you guys come across this YouTube video, please let me know what software tools and hardware you used back in the day. I'm sure a lot of people out there would like to know. So a bit about these designers. Ron Lussier was employed by LucasArts between 1992 and 1997 and also produced the TIE Fighter cover artwork. John Knowles was with LucasArts for a very long time and later joined the Forza team at Microsoft. While at LucasArts, he did art, animation, game design, just about everything. His LucasArts games include the 2D cutscenes in Dark Forces and other working games like Episode 1 Racer, Shadows of the Empire, Rebel Assault 1 and 2, which I also have an upcoming poster video for, X-Wing, TIE Fighter, and so many more. This video would run over an hour if I mentioned every game John Knowles worked on. And last on the poster is Terry Suhu, also with LucasArts for a very long time and worked on many of the game boxes and their package designs, including all the games that John Knowles worked on. Giving credit to the artists and designers of this poster is probably the best way I can end this video. You guys made me want to buy this game, not the clerk at the register or the writers and the magazines behind the reviews and previews. Your talent put into this poster and box art did that. And to the programmers and other artists that did the heavy lifting for Dark Forces, Thank you. You brought me with you into the Star Wars universe like no other game before it. So take care, fellow poster and promo rats. Stay well out there, and I'll see you with another new video next week. Bye for now. Stop, Rebel Star! <laughs>